Blessed be everybody, in this video we are going to be talking all about truth spells. And the back end of this video I will be teaching you how to craft a truth spell or truth candles to employ whenever you want to make a truth spell go to work. However, I do think that just, you know, for the sake of also expanding on one's understanding of how magic and truth and white magic, especially very heavy-duty white magic like this works, we need to talk a little bit about what truth spells really are versus how truth spells don't work, where the mistakes or the misunderstandings come in, and why you need to be ready to approach the realm of truth spells with spiritual and emotional maturity, sincerity, integrity, and humility, because this is some heavy-duty stuff. Again, it's very, very good white magic at the end of the day, in my opinion, but this is also something that can be a bit unwieldy in the hands of those that do not necessarily have a, a grasp on the totality of what they're working with here. So instead of doing the demonstration first and then the lesson after, we're doing the lesson first and then the demonstration after. Truth spells will work to uncover things that have been confused muddled, blocked, hidden behind veils, or again, illusions, or glamours, or any kind of mental or social controls. And truth spells also reveal truths from the past. And it works in a multitude of different ways, right? Some t I, I think the best way to describe the way a truth spell would go to work in these kinds of instances uh, comes from the movie Practical Magic. And for those of you who are 90s witches, you remember. Uh, I, without spoiling the movie for people who want to see it, uh, there are a couple of scenes about, you know, a third of the way into the film where truth starts to manifest itself by any means necessary. The frog that belches up a ring, one of the characters is incapable of telling a lie to the person that is brought into the situation that they are meant to you know, work with in that situation. Um, they're not compelled to speak against their will, but they cannot lie. And even if lies or omissions or half-truths come out, they eventually get revealed anyway. All kinds of things start manifesting to bring the truth to light and dispel cover-ups, illusions, glamours, and artificial narratives and false reality experiences that are going on with the characters in the film. And that is how truth spells really work, which is also what makes them so helpful when you're doing divination, when you are doing psychic readings and things like that. Truth spells do not abide false narratives and false realities, and this can be challenging to the ego that may or may not be in a place of its own maturity or readiness to receive or accept the truth. This is the type of white magic, and yes it is white magic, that separates the maidens from the crones and the squires from the sages. It separates the manipulative witch from the aligned witch. It separates the controlling magician from the aligned magician. And there can be things that come up when you are doing truth spells, depending on what you're looking at, that may also require you to revise your understanding of maybe a certain narrative or a situation that has played out in your life in the past or may have been playing out in the present. Truth spells can also be extremely helpful for making decisions, especially if you have a lot of options, you don't know what road to pick, <clears throat> kind of going through a Seven of Cups kind of experience, you know, you're just kind of overwhelmed with options and spoiled for choice, you don't know what to do. That can be really helpful because it helps reveal the truths about all options that you have on the table. But it can also invalidate and unmake beliefs that you have or biases that you have about a certain situation or that you have invested into that could be part of a false 
reality or an inorganic creation or a contrivance. And so you got to be ready, you know, when you're working with truth spells for that as well. You know, if you are looking at uh, a truth spell and suddenly it brings up a bunch of revisionist family history and suddenly you find out grandpa or grandma or uh, dad or mom or whoever, you know, was spinning a yarn that's going to come up or you may find out that maybe a certain history that you share with maybe your work situation or an old relationship or a present connection may not be what you thought it was these are things that can come out with truth spells and again it's white magic at the end of the day but it's white magic from a cosmic perspective which means top down which means looking at everything from the perspective of being outside of this little reality experience that is going on, right? Outside the uh, little mini universe or the self-created narrative or the externally imposed narrative or the conditioning or the matrix, so to speak, that one may have either been living in, co-creating, or maybe even uh, willingly or unwillingly participated in creating. I've had beliefs and feelings validated, I've had them invalidated, and sometimes things that invalidate our beliefs or our feelings are true. And so it takes a certain level of sincerity and honesty and emotional maturity and spiritual maturity to be able to handle truth spells with care, but also with the wisdom that this is still serving in the highest interest of all concerned. Now, that's not to say that you should be afraid of truth spells. You know, when it comes to things that are harmless, let's just say harmless, uh, they don't have a collateral effect that is throwing other people off their path. It is not creating any kind of discord or anything like that. Truth spells really, again, from the cosmic perspective, it's like, Look, that's an isolated situation. It's not really, you know, taking anyone off their own soul's journey. It's not uh, infringing upon anybody's volition, right? Free will, their capacity to process information and make their own decisions. As long as it's not infringing in those kinds of ways, usually truth spells will overlook those kinds of things. But if it's very clear that a certain situation is running on, well experiences, energy, information, testimonies, narratives, and arrangements that do keep people off their path, they do have a discordant collateral effect, and they are ultimately continuing to run only because of the falsity of the situation being reinforced by willing and unwilling participants truth spell is going to be going to work. And yes, nowadays, especially at least at the time of me making this video, you know, on the 5th of June 2023, um, this idea of creating one's own reality has been, uh, you know, while that is very true, has also been distorted where a lot of people are trying to manifest realities out of duct tape, hope, lies, conjecture, manipulations. So you've got people kind of um, not having the most divinely aligned relationship with the truth in those respects. It's not about forcing people to hurt themselves or perjure themselves, but it is about eliminating situations that run on falsity, that run on contrivance, manipulation, and things like that. Now, I think that this is a test that we all need to go through on our spiritual path. If somebody asks me, Nico, are you willing to go through with that? I say yes. Always willing to go through with that. I am fine with that. I don't need to be afraid of that kind of thing. If something would be destroyed by a purification or a cleansing or a, uh, a healing spell, or a spell for freedom, or a spell for truth, then I say, it's not meant to exist. Well, if you are all about the truth, I think that this can be very, very helpful for, again, helping you solve puzzles, helping you find your way, helping you find a direction, helping you understand your past, helping you understand your present, but also helping you to get out of situations where you may feel a sense of lostness or you may be experiencing true lostness, but you need to be mindful that it's going to reveal 
exactly what needs to be revealed. And so this is some high potency white magic. So anyway, that's just a, a little bit of a chat for some further thinking, further uh, contemplation as it relates to truth spells and, you know, just kind of understanding the totality of what you're taking on with them. I do highly recommend using them. I do highly recommend having a good, healthy relationship with the truth. And I also just want to say for those of you that might be tempted to use this to control the truth or to put your truth onto others, it won't work that way. You're just going to have to be ready to see what happens from the cosmic perspective. So when it comes to doing truth spells, you can use a lot of different colors for truth spells. You don't necessarily need to adhere to one particular color. I'm using uh, this very dark royal blue, and I'm also using white. However, you can also use yellow, you can use red, you can use purple. There really isn't a lock on truth spells. And I've also scribed on to my blue candle three runes, Os, which is all about wisdom, spiritual revelations, knowledge, right, psychic insights, Lagus, which is all about flow, also about psychic insights, interconnectivity, and I've also written Dagas, which is the rune of dawn, revelation, overcoming darkness, overcoming the mists, mists parting, and the light of day. And I'm only showing you the blue candle because I've done the same thing on the white, but it's not going to show up on camera. And so I've written all that down. And on the back of your candle, you can write down what your intention is. I like to just kind of work with very general intention, truth, revelation, now. If you want to write an additional intention on a blank side, you can if you want to make it more specific. This will help those revelations that are most important in that circumstance to come forward for you. So we'll talk more about ways you can employ it and, and ways you can set your intentions again in the later clip, but I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing here. First things first, I want to make my anointing oil, okay? And so for the anointing oil that I'm using, and you don't have to copy me exactly, keep in mind if you don't have uh, a stock of essential oils, and I know they can be expensive, you can simply work with olive oil and then dust your candles with the dry ingredients. I am going to be dusting these with some dry ingredients, so you'll see how I go about doing that. But I am creating an anointing oil for this. For the essential oils that I'm going to be putting in here, I've got thyme oil. Thyme, this is red thyme, it can be any kind of thyme. Thyme is a really strong herb for pure truth, purification and truth. And so it can also cleanse and clear illusions, again, cover-ups, vagaries, confusion, all of that kind of thing. And so we want that in here, puts everything in good order. And since I'm working with a very, very small bottle, I got this bottle at a craft store in the jewelry section uh, for bead, you know, containment and whatnot. I'm just only going to put one in so it's not overpowering. And so one drop. Time goes in every truth spell. I also add time to my return to sender spells because it sends the negative energy or the psychic attack or the malediction sent upon me back to the person who originated it, who started the process. So it's kind of a way to go over, like say they had somebody else cast the spell for them, or they paid somebody to cast the spell for them. If you add time to it, it kind of goes over the person in the middle and goes right to the person who commissioned the attack. So a little something for you. I'm adding peppermint. Peppermint so that it works quickly, right? Peppermint is an accelerant. It speeds up magic. It also, folk, it all, oh, I guess we got two in there. It also brings clear communication, right? It brings opportunities for clear communication. Now, that communication might be verbal, it might be written, it might be psychic, it might be something that is kind of clearing up a past confusion, it doesn't matter. But peppermint makes it work faster and it also smooths everything out and gets everything, again, in proper order so it's not a jumbled puzzle. And I'm also adding lavender. So lavender is really good for bringing in help for psychic and spiritual endeavors, 
but it also is really good for cleansing, purity, clearing. It can also relax the situation. It can help the truths come out more smoothly and in a more coherent way. And we really want that. We don't want just like a purge. We don't want to have a, an info dump where everything is just coming all over the place. It's a jumbled histrionic mess. We want something clear, specific, coherent, and actionable. And so lavender, thyme, and peppermint can be really, really good for that. And so now we want to add a carrier. And you can use any kind of carrier you want. I happen to still have some pistachio oil on hand from my How to Break Mind Control and Love Spell uh, video, and I'm going to be using that. Pistachio is one of the best for truth spells. You can also just use regular olive oil, and you can just take pistachio dust or the skins of pistachio uh, nuts themselves and grind them up with dry herbs and dust your candles with it if that's easier for you because sometimes this is hard to find. So I'm just going to give this a good shake and now we have the base oil for our truth spell. And again, if you want to just use regular olive oil and then, you know, use the crushed pistachio skins and, you know, dry thyme and dry peppermint and dry lavender. Grind them all up in a food processor or a mortar and pestle and then dust your candles with it. You can totally do that too. That's fine. There is no difference between using essential oils or, or dry ingredients in this spell. Now, to get on to the dry ingredients. First, I'm going to add a bit more thyme because that is going to fortify the intention help it hold stronger, and also at the same time, make sure that, you know, it, once everything kind of comes out, all of the illusions or confusions or puzzles or unnecessary information, unnecessary exchanges, uh, things that could be distracting or pulling focus or red herrings, just clear out. I'm also adding ground nutmeg. Now, nutmeg is classic for work with any kind of psychic revelations, um, divination, helping to achieve altered states of consciousness, dream work, and of course, helping one to develop and improve their psychic abilities, but also for revelations such as this that we are going for. Lastly, I'm adding a bit of cayenne pepper, not too much, but a bit. Now, the reason we want cayenne pepper in here is because, and again, just a little bit. There we go, just a little dusting. Cayenne pepper is a great blockbuster. If you're dealing with situations where um, you might be feeling like there is a, a person or a situation or an energy that is trying to control a narrative or block a truth from being revealed, or it's just maybe been so long, you know, the blockage could simply just be memory or incorrect memory or revisionist history, things like that. Cayenne pepper kind of goes, nah, -uh. we're blockbusting on that and we're getting the truth out. So let's uh, grind this up. And you can of course use a food processor if you want, but uh, for those of you who know me, I am me. Now, before I anoint these with my oil and dust it down, when it comes to setting up for a truth spell, of course I don't have my candle holders in here, um, and I'm not going to be lighting these right away today. But what you're gonna want to do is, again, write down, if you have a very specific intention, make sure that you are writing it down and it's on the candle or it's on a piece of paper, a petition paper, underneath your candle holder. You don't have to necessarily go all out with this. Um, make sure though that you are being clear in what you're asking for. And again, be prepared for what comes forward. We'll again, talk about that uh, in the next clip. I'm gonna take a bit of our oil and there it goes. Spirit's like, you need more. Okay. 
Get it good and mixed. Keep the oil up, kind of wake up the energies in it. And you can just give your candles a good rub. And as I say in all of my videos, I don't have a particular method or directive when it comes to the way I anoint my candles. There are plenty of traditions out there that all have their logic um, and their reasons for doing it one way. If that applies to you and that works for you, and when I say works, I mean it gets results, not resonates, but it works and gets results, you go ahead and do it your way, it's fine. Um, but there are so many different ways with so much, you know, when it comes to perfectly understandable logic with different traditions, I, I prefer not to sort of claim that there's a better way than another way than it's not. And obviously the way that I am anointing my candles is very neutral because this is going to do, well, many things at once. It's going to not only reveal the truth, bring the truth to light and manifest everything that is necessary for the truth, but it's also going to be neutralizing and clearing illusions and veils and mist and fog and cover-ups and things like that. Okay, so now we're going to take our dry herbs and we're going to give these a good healthy dusting. And if you made a stock of oil like I did, you can save that. It's always good to have a little bit more on hand. And it doesn't have to be too much dusting, but I like to just make sure there's good coverage so that everything is nice and just a little bit of everything. There we go. And so now we're going to charge the candles. And I'm also gonna include my oil so I can charge my oil for this as well. If you've made a stock of oil, there you go. You can charge it like this too. I've already done my work of cleansing and purifying the space. So I bring all of my primary attention into my heart. And then I call in unity with all of my higher selves, all of my divine ascended aspects, I call in unity with my Oversoul, my Godhead, my I Am Presence. I call forth complete unity with my divine multidimensional expanse in this now. And once you have, you know, everything aligned and unified, you put your hands over your candles and your oil and you call forth com the complete light of divine truth. And Visualize that light coming through the candle and into this world, through the oil and into this world. Not out from out there, not coming out of, you know, the sky or anything like that, but shining forth through from within and behind this reality. Charging it up, bringing that light forward. I also say I surrender this work to the divine unity of my multidimensional expanse, all of my higher levels of consciousness, my oversoul, my Godhead, and my divine allies. I surrender in perfect love and perfect trust. Take some time when you're charging it up as well. Pray over it. Make sure that that energy is good and strong. You know, you can feel the energy, you know, emanating from the candles, from the oil, you know, coming off of them and coming into this reality, coming into this world. And then when you want to light the candles, you can light the candles. And again, you can use this whenever you want to have a truth get revealed or delved in more clearly, right? Get everything out in the open so that you can have a clearer sense of direction and so on. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope this spell serves you well. Happy casting and good luck to you all. I will be back again with more magic very, very soon. But in the meantime, you all take care and blessed be. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, engagement helps this channel out a lot. Take care.